Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and Weather School. This is a special video to commemorate D-Day, which occurred 70 years ago on the 6th of June. I've always been fascinated by the forecasts that were undertaken on D-Day and the legend that is uh, Stag, who was chief forecaster to Eisenhower. It was his responsibility to take in all the data from various different forecasting centres, from the Americans, from the British and from the Admiralty, and to collate that information. Now, there were differing forecasts that were made, and it was Stagg's job to find a route through those forecasts and give Eisenhower the information and the guidance he needed in order to launch the campaign. Now, along the way, I've read lots of books, all the documents related to Stag, and um, it's very interesting, actually, to, to get to know the man, because it does seem as though he really did feel the pressure of um, the weight that was on his shoulders, or put on his shoulders. Actually, not by Eisenhower, funnily enough, because Eisenhower did express a few times how he understood the difficulties um, of what Stag was trying to do. But I think that it was pressure that Stag created on himself and he did find it frustrating at times dealing with the forecasters from um, these different centres and trying to get an opinion formed as to what the weather on D-Day may do. Now that's raised many questions for me particularly about the decision to postpone by 24 hours from the 5th until the 6th of June and whether that was more luck on Stagg's part than judgment. Um, and that's not to take anything away from Stagg um, as a forecaster or as a man. Um, it's just interesting to think about what scenarios would be going through his mind and what scenarios would be going through my mind as a professional forecaster too, presented with a similar situation. Now, I'm really indebted to the uh, National Met Office Archive and Library uh, down at Exeter because the staff there have just been wonderful. Whenever I've made a request for information, it's been forthcoming rapidly. The charts that you'll see now are courtesy of them. And um, the staff there really are in the best spirits of public service. I mean, you know, we've, we've got copies of charts here, look, from uh, the day itself. These are the actual working charts that um, forecasters were using on that day. We've also got uh, Stag's diary as well. So he made comments in this diary. Basically, what he says was to remind himself so that if questions were asked at any point in the future, he could go back and reference um, what his train of thought was. And it really is amazing to see this. And it's my mission to uh, get these all collated into a single volume so that you can uh, enjoy them too and really get the feel of uh, the man Stag and of what he was trying to achieve during D-Day. Now this video is dedicated to all the forecasters and all the observers, all the analysts and all those assistants who took part not only in D-Day but in both world wars and in war campaigns ever since. Of course war is never nice but um, we hope that as forecasters we can help a little bit to make sure that um, good triumphs over evil in the end. So this is dedicated to all those who gave their lives and who took part in active service and indeed still do through our forces overseas. So uh, see what you think and uh, I hope that uh, you enjoy this special video as much as I did in making it. So this is the actual working chart from Saturday the 3rd of June 1944. It's the chart that Stagg and his team would have been working from and um, just at first glance of this you see low pressure out here in the Atlantic, uh, more low pressure here, we've got another area of, high, of low pressure here, high pressure down in the Azores but this train of the low pressure areas just screaming across the Atlantic pushing fronts eastwards with them all the time when Stagg was looking at this he must have been thinking what on earth are we looking for here if we've got to find a weather windrow in this lot I mean even now um, to see that sort of chart is unusual uh, in early June it really is a succession of westerlies and it's really more what you'd expect to see uh, during the winter months through the UK let alone uh, during the early part of June but Stag knew that he'd got to find a weather window in there somewhere. 
Now, if we just uh, move on to the chart for midnight, um, again, these are photographs that have been taken by the Met Office Archive and Library, um, and I'm really grateful to them for them. Um, so uh, we, some of them will be a little bit blurred because they are just photographs, but they certainly give us an idea as what was going on. So. This is the uh, one o'clock in the morning chart on the fourth. Now, Stag was had a conference at quarter past four in the morning. So this was the chart that he was going to be working from before briefing the generals. And again, shows little change. Still two areas of low pressure, complex area of low pressure out towards the west. High pressure down here towards um, the Azores. But I think he would have been looking at this area here, probably not taking too much notice of it just at this time. But... There's a gap there between the lows, and what tends to happen is you get a ridge of high pressure that forms in those gaps. So he's probably taking notice of that, or certainly the forecasters are taking notice of that, but of more concern would be this blast of southwesterly winds screaming through the country, again, bringing strong winds, bringing gales, and bringing rain. So Stag went along to the conference at 4.15 with the knowledge that actually a delay of 24 hours would be sensible because even with the best will in the world, this is not going to be clearing through particularly very quickly. However, what he would probably have done um, is to have got a timing on the cold front that's out in the Atlantic here and the movement of that front. By extrapolating it through, you can kind of work out that the cold front probably would pass through the channel at about 1 o'clock in the morning of the 5th. Because things are moving so quickly, this thing would just sweep eastwards so, so quickly that probably within 24 hours, that system would be clearing away towards the east and he would have been aware of that by seven o'clock in the morning look there's the front you can see just how much it's moved in and then by one o'clock in the afternoon unfortunately not many observations available but by seven o'clock in the evening that's the chart that would have been presented so by now stag has uh, is aware that there's a delay of 24 hours they're not going to go for d-day on the 5th of june they're going to go on the 6th of june instead and he would have been aware that um, this delay was now in a place. So this was the chart for seven o'clock on the evening of the fourth. Deep area of low pressure here towards the uh, north of Scotland. And if we just zoom in on that area of low pressure, you see there that the central pressure was 979 millibars. That really is a deep, deep low. However, again, what Stag would have been looking at, and certainly what forecasters today would be looking at, is this cold frontal clearance. Behind a cold front, you get an area of better weather, so you get an area of clear skies, normally lasting for two or three hours before showers set in behind. But also what would have interested him was this ridge of high pressure that suddenly developed in here. Now, looking at this chart, I wonder if that's exaggerated somewhat. I wonder if it was quite like that. Um, makes me wonder just a, a few questions as to how exaggerated that high is but certainly actually the chart itself is correct i mean if i've been forecasting what i would be thinking at this stage is well actually we should have been going in behind this cold front because i can't guarantee that this ridge is still going to be there particularly with this low that's coming in behind it yes the low would tend to pump a ridge northwards from this warm air coming up here but the speed of movement and the track of these things is such that actually that thing could just scream through, get rid of that ridge completely, and you may not even notice it, and that's it, bang, we've delayed then for another two weeks. So Stack must have been panicking at this stage, thinking, I wonder what on earth I've done here, and what the, was this completely the right call to, uh, to have made? I would have liked to have been in behind that cold front. Ahead of it, we got some really strong winds, which would be producing rough seas and really rough seas because it had been windy for several days so they would have been producing some rough seas coming up through the channel by one o'clock in the morning of the fifth the low is still north of scotland but that ridge look out towards the west in the central parts of the atlantic has become even more exaggerated i mean this really does say a lot about the skill of the people that were drawing the ice bars and fronts on this chart that's a work of art in itself that chart to be able to fit those ice bars in with a limited amount of observations that you've got and be able to make prognoses based on it is nothing short of an act of genius. And 
it's 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 art. It's an artist at work seeing that, seeing that chart created, and seeing it um, put down on paper is a work of art in itself. And you know, we shouldn't underestimate the skills of the analysts in drawing up these charts. These days, it's still a skill. And it's one that I try to teach my students at university, and I try to practice several times a week, drawing on the isobars, drawing on the fronts. But to do it on a scale such as this, and remember, this is a huge piece of paper. We're looking here at uh, a zero size paper charts. To do it on such a chart and to produce something so neat is, um, quite frankly, I just find it stunning. I find it remarkable. Um, and then on to 7 o'clock in the morning of uh, the 5th. Now... This is when, of course, D-Day was planned for. So it was at this time that D-Day had been planned for. And if they'd have gone, they would have been in uh, low pressure towards the northeast of Scotland, quite a deep area of low pressure up there as well. And this northwesterly flow behind this cold front, again, Stag must have been thinking when he saw that chart in the morning, goodness, I hope I've made the right call. I mean, he just talked through his diaries and um, in his book about the stress and the pressure that he was under at this time but what he would be hoping for is that ridge would build in having seen these two charts he would probably have been more settled that this thing wasn't just going to scream in from the west and that this ridge did stand a chance of building so probably by this time um stag was probably a little more confident in his forecast than he probably had been before uh, seven o'clock on uh, the morning of the uh, 5th and in fact that's a closer in view of the chart for the morning of the 5th you can see there that low look up towards the uh, northeast of Scotland showing that central pressure of 977 millibars but these aren't bad conditions you know through the channel not bad at all and on a west northwest yes it would have been a rough night for the troops on board the ships but actually on a west northwesterly you've got good visibility it's improving all the time actually that's Looking at it here from what I can see, that's a perfectly doable uh, weather situation for the criteria uh, that had been laid down. But anyway, the 5th wasn't to be. It was to be the 6th. Uh, and I've got some theories on reasons for delay, but I won't go into them on here. Um, and then we get to uh, midnight, or, sorry, midday on the 5th. So this is midday on Monday the 5th. Look. There's our area of high pressure coming in to the Atlantic. Here it is. Look, it's building its way eastwards. That low is not going anywhere particularly very fast, but this ridge is building in quite nicely. So we would have a constant feed, basically, of drier air coming in to the bottom portions of this low. So it would tend to improve visibility. It would tend to lift cloud bases as well, which, of course, is what uh, was needed for the Allied aircraft. And then uh, going on to the 7 o'clock chart for the evening of the 5th, you see that the ridge has built in quite nicely. 1 o'clock on the morning of D-Day itself on the 6th, and then 7 o'clock in the morning of the 6th. Actually, it doesn't look hugely different, does it, to the uh, 5th? I mean, the only difference really is that the ridge has managed to get in a little bit further, and so conditions probably improved. And then this is the chart for midday on D-Day itself and if we just zoom in a little bit closer into the UK there you can see that the load coming to the North Sea it had filled to 995 millibars so we'd still got this west northwest it's still blowing actually at the same sort of strength but this ridge coming into the west of Ireland had effectively done its job and had uh, brought in slightly drier weather uh, and enabled that window of D-Day to take place um, just look at the chart, a closer in view of the chart. There it is. There it is for uh, 7 o'clock in the morning of the 6th. And just compare the two. Look, there's the 5th. There's the 6th. So there's the 5th and there's the 6th. The main difference really is the depth of the low up towards the uh, northeast. And, you know, it does make you wonder, well, what would have happened if they'd have gone on the 5th? I wonder. But anyway, um, I just wanted to show you those really, just to uh, take you through the charts and the working charts as they would have been. There's more on my musings if you go to weatherweb.net and click on the musings uh, section. You'll see there I've written a little bit about what was probably going through Stag's mind on each of the uh, various days. So uh, you can go and have a little read. And also there's some links 
to bigger versions of the chart. So I hope that's been of interest to you. Um, for now, thanks again for watching and uh, whatever you're doing, keep the sun shining and have a great day. Thanks for watching and bye for now.